like my second least favorite food in the entire world. The first is coconut because coconut is the devil's fruit. Interesting. And if God, and if God didn't want us to get the coconut, he would not. She would not have created such a hard shell. That's what I, is what I say. Uh, we are okay. We align on that because I'm allergic to coconut. Uh, perfect. <laughs> uh, you are ba- you've been bathed in God's light. Are you drinking something right now? It's Orange Carbo Crush. And essentially, it is a natural wine. And so it's an orange wine that's had some skin contact. While I like a lot of wine, it is like really funky and it tastes like you're like, like drinking somebody's feet that have been marinating. I it. love a butter wine. It's more like a orange soda. Sessionable. Oh, okay. Sessionable. I've never heard that phrase fun uh fancy word that means like you can just get drunk off of it all <laughs> oh is that where session ale comes from yes oh i'm an idiot yes. you have a, a little book <laughs> so i showed jen the book when we first logged on i didn't know it was this small I, I just, it is a pocket guide to cheese because that is like this fits literally pocket size pocket and so i hold it next to my face so you can see how tiny it is um, yeah, it's like, what, it's like four by six. It's like the size of a postcard. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is, so this is my book. It's called Stuff Every Cheese Lover Should Know. Yeah. important to have varying levels of meltiness um yeah it's sort of like graduate level grilled cheese because when you <laughs> you know when you start you're you're like american singles and butter and the white bread and then you you go to college and then you're like ooh, nicer cheddar yeah. <laughs> different bread and then cheeses yeah and then yeah graduate level is like adding a jam two kinds of cheese <laughs> Probably like the 55 5 rule. Something that's readable at like 50 feet away and a five feet away rule and then the five inches rule. First you get the, the big overall like diagonal layout. Then you get like, you know, like the contrast between the two and then you get like the details like layered down within each one individually. You're kind of, you're kind of nailing <laughs> the different scales. So you're, what you're saying is I'm a design genius. join you but I didn't I don't want you to lose viewers no that's it's all right (laughs) they brought this on themselves by redeeming the (laughs) sing-along what have you wrought upon us a few bad dudes you gotta you gotta give it up for a few bad dudes they're gonna they're gonna make you sing y'all this is the first time that I've had to do this and maybe I don't have to keep going up I can go down you can always go down. Oh, see, wonderful. You have a wonderful singing voice. <laughs> Many in my life have disagreed. No, no. But, okay, so you're here because we met through tabletop stuff. But yeah. I wanted to invite you because you worked in restaurants for a while. Yes. Last time on the show. everybody i am jen del vega welcome back to attack the pantry this stream is a deep dive into ingredients cooking techniques and recipes to help you cook for yourself during uh you know that outside world stuff that's happening and for the rest of your adult life 
uh, last time on the show, we hung out. Who did we hang out with? We hung out with Dylan and Aram. Oh my God, how could I forget? Uh, we had some controversial bagel opinions and uh, basically talked about uh, their podcast, Kill Every Monster, which was super fun. Uh, you can watch all the past clips here on my channel if you click on videos and the entire archive is uploaded at youtube.com slash J-E-N-N-D-L-V. How are we doing? How are we doing? Hello, Emmy, welcome. Hola. Um, if you're new to the stream, uh, just I'm going to get some business out of the way first. I'm a Twitch affiliate. Uh, that means uh, if you subscribe to the channel, I get a little bit of pocket money to make this thing better and better every month. And one way around that is if you have Amazon Prime, you can gift a subscription to your favorite creators every month. So if you have one and you haven't assigned it to anyone yet, you can click on that purple button that says gift a sub and you get a little crown next to your name in the chat. Um, and if you want to get to know me, there's Patreon, there's Etsy, my social media. You can click on the About tab below the video here on Twitch. How are we doing today? How, how, how is everyone? <laughs> Let me get rid of this background here. Um, let's just get right into the show and tell. We got, we got a little, we got a short show and tell. And today I'm going to be... Uh, prepping my dinner, which is a Vietnamese dish called bon cha. If anyone is Vietnamese in the chat, please do correct me about the pronunciation. Uh, but if you would like to participate in the show and tell segment next week, you can tag me on Instagram and Twitter at Randwiches with your... Here we go. Instagram. Uh, you can tag me with your cooking photos and I will put it here on the slides and we can root for you because we love seeing what people cook every week, right? Yeah. Um, okay, let's see. What's new this week with me? First of all, can you hear me? I hope you can hear me. I hope my microphone works. I'm just gonna double check the audio really quick. <laughs> it works, great. So what's new with me this week? Um, we have a new culinary word of the day episode. It is residual heat which is surprisingly an environmental issue. You will find that most things are environmental issues these days. But uh, if you'd like to listen to this episode, it is on all the podcast platforms, Spotify, Apple. Uh, if you search for culinary word of the day. What else? Uh, this week on Patreon, uh, it's not a new recipe, but sometimes I go through and edit uh, existing recipes on Patreon. And um, like... I had the style guide change that I introduced last year, which is called the scrollable style. And a few recipe websites use this style, which is, um, you know, it has the ingredient list. And instead of um, keeping the ingredient list separate, uh, we actually mention every measurement in line as you encounter it in the recipe. So it's easier so you don't have to scroll all the way back up to the ingredient list. So I've been editing a lot of my recipes to fit that. And um, I've also added a variation to the sauteed peanuts recipe. And so the variation is here, pictured here. These, this is a dry peanut curry, which is curry leaf that becomes really crispy and fun to eat. Uh, but I ate this with rice as a stir fry yes, uh, last week. And it was really, really good. Super, super cheap to make. Uh, and I implore you to try it. Oh, wait, sorry, my headphones are in the way. Okay, what else is new? Uh, the new hot dog at Wonderville, uh, I'm actually bringing it in tonight. It's called Mustard Combat, and it's pickled mustard greens with pickled onions on a hot dog. And uh, thanks to Shayna Brewer for naming this hot dog. Um, and she will be getting a certificate at the end of the year <laughs> when I throw an appreciation party. Um, but yeah, you can get this hot dog starting tonight after 9 p.m. Because that's when I'm probably going to get there. Uh, speaking of uh, merch and stuff, I'm actually wearing <laughs> my Twitch merch. Um, so if you, I'm going to put the uh, shop in the chat. If you do exclamation point shop in my chat, it will show you the link to the fourth wall store. And so I'm wearing the hat that came in. This was a test 
test um, embroidery. So this is actually in the wrong spot. It's supposed to be in the back. <laughs> so you can wear the hat backwards and then you have an egg on your head. Uh, and I'm wearing the wind resistant, uh, water resistant anorak. Um, let me model this for you real quick, real quick. Let me show you full screen this. So it's got an, I already stained it. Look, I already stained it. We got the embroidered egg. It's, it's not a patch. It's like actually like embroidered on here. This is like thread. Um, it has a half zip. It has a hood, an adjustable hood. My hair is too long, so I can't exactly pull this up yet. Um, and the coolest thing I discovered, let's move the camera here. So it has the kangaroo pocket, which is awesome. But I also discovered this pocket, which, um, so if it gets too hot and you don't need this jacket anymore, you can actually stuff it into this pocket and it becomes its own little pouch with a handle, which is cool. I've never really seen that before. So <laughs> this is really great. Um, the only thing I would say is that this is like a thin layer. Oh, it has an adjustment on the waistband as well on the side here. So if I wanted this to be tighter, I could do that. But anyway, um, it's a very thin layer is what I'll say. And uh, it's, it's meant for like wearing other stuff underneath it. <laughs> so if you live in like California, it's kind of perfect weather for it. Uh, wouldn't really wear this in New York winter, uh, but I really like it and I'm excited uh, for it to be available. So if you want to support the channel, you can buy the Aggie Anorak in my shop. Um, okay, might take this off while I actually cook. Going back to the show and tell. We also have stickers. There are egg stickers. These are all of the emotes you get when you subscribe to this channel. Uh, and we also have hot dog stickers, uh, which are going to be in stock at Wonderville in person as well. So that's very exciting. Show and tell time. Again, if you'd like to participate in this portion of the show, make sure you tag me on Instagram and Twitter uh, with your cooking photos or cooking questions. Um, Alexander Chi wrote in, Hey Jen, any chance you have a favorite turkey chili recipe? I didn't want find one in your book and searching Jen De La Vega turkey chili was not super successful. Um, so the answer is I don't have a chili, uh, turkey chili recipe, even though I have a whole book about, uh, I have a whole uh, chapter in my cookbook about chili. Um, you can swap, uh, chili, uh, you can swap the ingredients in chili. So if you have a beef chili recipe, you can swap in the same amount of turkey, but because turkey does not have its own like naturally occurring fats, you know how like beef and pork have a lot of fat in them. That's what makes it so juicy. Um, turkey, you're going to have to add fat to it. So that either means by adding a neutral oil, uh, more neutral oil than what you're accustomed to uh, when you saute the meat, or you can chop up a few strips of bacon to make up for that fat deficit. Um, so Choose your own adventure here if you want to swap out the proteins, uh, but just know that turkey can be a little drier. That's all. Thanks for asking this question. Uh, my haploid heart sent along uh, the egg content I was requesting. Uh, this is cooking an egg from frozen. <laughs> it, it's really funny. Uh, <laughs> why you would want to cook an egg from frozen, I don't know, but it turns out you can freeze eggs, um, it's just not together. So I wrote an article for Yumly about this. Let me see if I can uh, get it for you. So if you're gonna freeze eggs or if you have a, a ton of <laughs> leftover eggs that you're not gonna get to, you separate the egg whites and the egg yolks and the egg whites can just freeze. Like you just put it in a plastic container, cover it and freeze it. Egg whites will be fine because they have a lot of like water content. The yolks on the other hand have a little bit of uh, different treatment. Like you can't, I don't know, the, the proteins will denature too much if you freeze egg yolks. Um, you can freeze egg yolks for like curing purposes later. Like if you were 
just um, you were going to cure the egg yolks in like sugar or soy sauce or salt. But uh, this article that I wrote, let me get it. Kitchen hacks for cooking eggs. Let's see, yolk. Do, do, do. Here it is. What to do with leftover egg yolks. One of the most classic ways to use egg yolks is in mayonnaise. These nutrient-rich yellow orbs also enrich ice cream bases and hollandaise sauce. It's easy to cure them, too. Uh, la, la, la. Egg yolks don't freeze the same way as whites, so it takes an extra step to store them if you're not using them right away. So for every four egg yolks, you add either one eighth teaspoon of kosher salt or one and a half teaspoon sugar, honey, or corn syrup, depending on whether you use them in a savory or sweet dish. Beat them well with the mix-in before storing it in the freezer. Here we go. We're going to put that article in the chat for you so that you can check it out. Anyway, uh, thanks for sending this one in. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, the Real Bat J sent this one in because I was talking about meatballs the other day and uh, he shared this really great memory because I used to eat this with my grandma, but my grandma did not put meatballs in it. So miswa is a very um, delicate noodle and I used to have it with just like chicken broth and like a little bit of pepper uh, but it looks like uh, that Jay here had it with meatballs growing up and fried garlic that looks awesome I would eat that yes it looks so good um, a few things from me I checked out a new local well it's been here for a while but I it's new to me <laughs> I checked out a local restaurant called Claudia's and um, it's Guatemalan, and I don't think I've had like Guatemalan food before, and it was phenomenal. This this was phenomenal. Like I had brunch. This is a brisket beef stew. It was so good and so perfect for an almost snowy day. It it was like fake snow. We had like five minutes of snow flurries, and then it was gone. <laughs> but it was perfectly warm for that day. Um, I've never had this Guatemalan hot sauce and I love it and I need to buy it. Uh, picamas. So the one on the left is uh, made with green tomato and the one on the right is made with red tomatoes and they're both really good. Recommend. If you like Frank's um, hot sauce, then you'll probably really love this hot sauce. Um, this week I made some sticky spare ribs from the cookbook that I'm working on. Uh, Chris asked for an over easy egg with breakfast the other day and I was like, hold still, let me get this photo. <laughs> and thus we got the, the really beautiful egg yolk photo. <laughs> uh, okay. I'll share the guest announcements toward the end of the show. Uh, but what are we going to make today? First, I'm going to take off my headphones and this anorak because I've already stained it. Uh, we're going to keep the hat on. Egg hat. Um, we're going to prep the buncha. Bun, bun, buncha, bun, buncha, probably. Um, that is Vietnamese. We're going to make Vietnamese uh, grilled meatballs with a salad and rice noodles. Yay! Or mung bean noodle, in my case. I have mung bean noodle, not rice noodle today. But let me uh, take this off real quick. Oop. Don't want my headphones to catch on anything. <laughs> All right, off we go. Ah. Okay, we're ready to prep some food. I need to prep some food. Okay. All right. What are we gonna make? Where are we gonna make? So I think the first thing I have to do is prep the ingredients that are going in the meat mix, and I'm gonna leave the meat mix uh, to marinate for like a half an hour, maybe. But uh, let's cut all the vegetables first before we handle the meat. Okay, so we're gonna do four to five, or we're gonna do five cloves of garlic, which I have here, uh, a quarter of a white onion, peeled, two scallions. Okay. Let's see, let's see. Uh, mix the pork, fish sauce, soy sauce, garlic, 
Huh. It's the shallots. I'm gonna guess it's the onion still. Anyway, let's do that. How are we doing, folks? I'm gonna start with these large pieces of garlic. I'm gonna get some of these ends. I'm making broth, so like that's why I'm hacking off the ends there. Save it. Oh yeah. Love to mince. We love to mince. Some of these flat parts. Scoot it all together. Scoop. Turn it 90 degrees. And choppy, 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 chop. Look at that. I'm going to use this little ramekin to put the garlic in it. Oh, 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 oh. Getting garlic everywhere. Sometimes my garlic has these really like woody ends, and so. Hey, what's up, Maxo? Cut off a little bit there. Cop some of my techniques. Cool. I'm glad. Hi. You're so slow with garlic. Well, the, I mean, the most practical advice I can give you is we're thinking about it like, it, you know, you're making a graph. So we're cutting along one axis. So one, where you make the large, large slices, not large slices, thin slices. And if it's too hard to like keep cutting, turn it on its flat side. So like, you see how I cut off um, some of it already? So if it's becoming too difficult to hold it like this, just move it to the flat side <laughs> and you can continue from here. Okay. So thin slices of garlic. And then from here, so you can try to stack a few of these, you make a uh, long julienne pieces. And then you take those julienne pieces, kind of try to stack them together like that, uh, and then turn them 90 degrees, and then you can mince from here. There. Yay. This is kind of a long way of doing it, but I'm just, I just wanted to illustrate that for you. How are you, Maxo? How was your MAGFest? Didn't you go? You played, right? Oh, I know. I know, these are sticky. These are sticky. You could just, if you're doing a lot of garlic, <laughs> you could also just put it in the food processor. Just do a bunch of garlic at once and then just have it on hand. But, you know, that's cleaning one more appliance. This does get really sticky. The first two cloves of garlic are like, uh, you know, it's not a big deal. But then you start to feel it around clove number three. <laughs> You're like, oh, this is really sticky. You could also do this. So again, I'm doing like thin slices with one. And then you could just put it on top of the pile here and chop through that again because then you're mincing up everything else again and catching things you might have missed so yeah so i could just do that so thin slices and then put it on top of the pile and then go through the pile again because you you know really thorough mince <laughs> A little inconsistent, but you can also put the point down and run the knife using this hand to uh, rotate through like this. Catch any of those big pieces that I missed. 
Boom. Into the ramekin, into the ramekin, into the ramekin. <laughs> yeah, you learn the run through the pile method. Yep, it's a thing. situation over here. I'm going to take that out. Okie dokie. Last one. if you're just joining, I'd love to hear about what you're making for dinner tonight. All right. Sufficient. Big pieces there. All right. That's enough of the garlic. And I know what you mean. The garlic really makes the knife sticky. So I'm going to go rinse my knife real quick. So I can cut other things without get, it getting sticky. Okie dokie. Let's check on. Ooh, you're probably going out tonight. Nice. Whoa, a miso fish chowder? Excuse me, that sounds fantastic. That sounds really good, yo. I'm into that. Like a good fish chowder. All about a fish stew. All right, we're gonna quarter this onion and mince it. And when you work with onions, keep them face down so you don't cry. Right? <laughs> Trash bag in the sink. Here. I'm gonna keep some of this for the broth that I'm gonna work on later. Get the paper paper off. Oh, I know. Imagine cutting onions face up. One, it sucks because, you know, you're you're um, exposing the cell walls, which is basically like mustard gas. <laughs> um, so that's why we keep them face down. But also it is like unstable. You can't slice like this. Slice it face down. It's more stable. All right. So. I'm going to mince. So, um, a misconception there is online about, um, onion is, uh, to julienne an onion, you actually do not cut, um, this way. You know, you cut with the limes, because it will actually divide better. So, the end is always going to be one you have to julienne separately. But after you do that, uh, initial, hold on. The mince on these. Doo, 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 doo. So you cut off the end, and then as you slice along the lines, it becomes these uh, easy to pull off onion bits. But I'm also gonna run my knife uh, down them because we're gonna be mincing anyway. We're just mincing anyway. Thin 
babies thin. Please don't fall apart. Here we go. You are the judge of how uh, high you can stack things. Because if it's unstable, don't slice it. Like, <laughs> do a few layers at a time. Don't don't uh, overwhelm yourself. Because you don't want the knife to slip. That's the worst feeling. You know, when you get hurt. <laughs> All right. On our way. here. I need to wrangle in. And if anybody has any cooking questions while I'm chopping, happy to answer them. Otherwise, I am happy for the company of just, uh, you know, hanging out while I'm chopping stuff. Okay. Onion. There you go. <laughs> the close your eyes and flail at the board with the knife method. I do not recommend. Do not recommend. <laughs> okay. Let's see. We've minced the onion. Okay, now we're going to mix stuff together. Cool. Let's do it. Um, we're going to get a bowl. Boom. And to the bowl... Let's get my uh, handy dandy bench scraper, bench scraper, put the onion in there. You think all your cooking advice usually boils down to maximizing small kitchen space. I mean, that is so vital for apartment living. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you grew up with a kind of spacious kitchen and apartment life has given you the exact opposite. Yeah, it's definitely a different skill set for sure. I am with you on that. Like I, I grew up with a, a, big, a pretty big kitchen. Okay, so. We're gonna add one pound of ground pork to the bowl. I'm gonna definitely wash my hands after this. Sorry for that sound, that was awful. Into the bowl, into the bowl, into the bowl, to grandmother's house. Okay, also into the bowl. We're doing, let's see, a tablespoon of fish sauce. <sighs> Yum. We love a tablespoon of soy sauce. Oh, gotta wash this because it's sugar time. Got my towel down here to dry off my spoon. Please welcome large vat of sugar. Hey. Dumplings? No, I'm making a bun cha, which is Vietnamese uh, meatballs. 
and it comes with uh, rice noodles and uh, vegetables. So I'm making the meat mix now and we're going to let this marinate and then we're going to form it into patties and I have a grill pan that's preheating already which is very exciting. Just want to make sure it's getting to all the pieces, like all the parts of the meat. Nothing is missing the garlic or the onion. This is great because I was studying burgers for a minute and um, I learned that James Beard's burger recipe has um, grated onion in it. That's one way to incorporate flavor. And these meatballs just straight up have minced onion in it. Okay, I think that's good. Um, okay, Alexa, set a timer for 30 minutes. I'm gonna put this aside. Wash my hands real quick. Okay, I think we have a few more vegetables to cut up. Okay, so we're gonna take this onion and put it aside. Next. Next. What's happening? Next. Uh, okay, I can cook the noodles. Uh, rough chop the lettuce, cucumber. Okay, great. Easy. We can do this very quickly. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's uh, clean off the cutting board. Okay. So we've got Persian cucumber. It is uh, not to be confused with a Kirby cucumber, which are used in pickles. Uh, what's up, Russell? How you doing? <laughs> Good to see y'all. Um, Persian cucumbers, uh, you're going to see these a lot in like modern recipes and like Bon Appetit, especially in the Guardian with like uh, Otolenghi and all that. Um, so Persian cucumbers are special because they have the least amount of seeds. Uh, and so that means you're getting more of the vegetable versus seed, you know? So, um, I'm just going to chop this on a diagonal cute like some thin slices or you can see that the seeds are translucent like they're not um like the white seeds that you would have to take out Oops. <laughs> but these are super good fresh cucumber cucumber what else we got scallions. Beep, 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 beep. We're gonna cut off the ends. I'm not regrowing these, but if you were gonna regrow these, so you would uh, save like an inch or an inch and a half of the bottom here, and then you stick this in a shot glass of water, and then uh, it will grow uh, for like weeks. Like I kept my scallions alive for a long time during the pandemic, but I'm not gonna regrow these today. We are gonna do, I'm gonna peel off the little slimy layer here. Okay, I'm gonna cut off some of the uh, drier bits at the end here. Anything that is bruised, there we go. Well, we'll use that in broth. What am I doing? Don't waste that. So we're going to, um, this is optional. I mean, this is a style thing. I like cutting things on the diagonal, but you can also go like rings, but I'm going to go on a sharp diagonal, which is, uh, in recipes, you might see this as cutting on a bias. So, um, you know, uh, so we're going to hold it on the diagonal and cut super thin. You want to make sure you have a really sharp knife for this because you'll end up bruising the scallion if it's not sharp enough. This is the sharpest knife I have right now. and I need to sharpen the rest. 
And then you'll get these beautiful clean cuts that are super long and they have these cool shapes, right? Sharp bias, sharp diagonal bias. Beauty. Beauty. Then you want to run your fingers through the scallions to like separate them out a little bit better. Like some pieces get stuck together. So you want to break it up a little bit, but delicately don't smash, you know, you can also just do this, toss it up a, a little bit and then it'll separate naturally. Pretty. Oh my God. Okay, next I have some cilantro. Really just want to uh, rough chop this, but uh, we'll separate the stems from the leaves. Cause I like to cut the stems a little bit more than the leaves. Let's get my prep pan here. Let's just uh, clean up a little bit here. I'm gonna add my scallions there. Cute. Cute. Oh. Okay. Cucumber. Now we can deal with our cilantro. So if you're going to try to get leaves off of herbs, uh, you can do this cool trick that I learned from restaurants is you hold it upside down and you use a knife to sort of shave off the leaves. This works with like bigger, <laughs> bigger bouquets of herbs, but you can also just scrape like this to get the leaves off. It's not very precise, but it's a little faster than picking through. So yeah, so you're left with like leafy bits, some stem, there you go. Just gonna rough chop that. Whee! Onto the pan. Then I'm gonna use the ends in a broth. We're gonna keep that there. And then I like to really mince the stems because they're, you know, they're crunchy, so. I like using the stem. Some people don't like it, but I just don't want to waste stuff, you know. I actually had instant ramen today with um, cilantro stems, and it was like, I'm eating vegetables. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cool. So I'm going to run my knife through. Make sure I got the big pieces here. Lovely. Boom. Great. Let's put this on the pan. My prep pan. Love having my prep pan. You can tell that my um, cutting board is a little concave right now because I can't scrape up everything. <laughs> this is what years of use will do. Oh boy, I'm gonna wipe it. All right, so let me clean this up a little bit. Wipe off my knife. Okay. 
So if you're just joining the chat, I would love to hear what y'all are making for dinner or if you're going to go somewhere, tell me about it. I want to hear. Or if you have any cooking questions while I'm working here, you can go ahead and ask. The next thing, I'm not actually going to cut this whole head of lettuce. We're just going to cut off a few leaves because it's only two of us that are going to be eating this. So I'm just going to take off you know, the outer leaves. Three, four, five, and six. That's good. Six is good, right? Six is good. Oh, we lost one. This one's all wrinkly anyway. All right, this, all right. Yeah, these are pretty clean. Pretty clean. Also gonna rough chop these and we'll take off any like wilty parts here. This one needs a little bit of a rinse. Okay, so we're just gonna do a little rough chop. It's kind of like a giant chiffonade. You try to roll it into a cigar without really breaking it. And uh, we're gonna run our knife through. Boom. And look at that. Salad, well. <laughs> Salad. Hooray. Make room for it on our prep pan here. Look at all this green stuff. Wow, I'm going to eat all of these vegetables. <laughs> Look at those vegetables. Oh my god. Now next, now next, we're gonna make a little pack of these Pine Brand Bean Vermicelli, which is a thin mung bean based noodle. So there is no gluten, which is great. Um, the instructions, soak in water for at least seven minutes. If using in salad, soak for seven minutes and then boil for three before adding to the salad. Okay, got this. Um, easy, this, this is great, really easy prep. <laughs> them. They're so cute. Can you see them? It's not very defined. It looks like a big white block of styrofoam. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to boil some water in my kettle and then I'm also going to soak this. Alexa, set a timer for seven minutes. Second timer. Seven minutes. Starting now. Then we've got soaking noodle. Cool. All right. So meanwhile, let's set up my broth situation. I'm just gonna clear out some stuff here. Don't need all this right now. Oh.
Gotta get the slow cooker from the shelf. <laughs> Plug it in the slow cooker. And we're also gonna put our scraps from just now in the slow cooker. Oh my god. Great. Not quite done. Not quite yet. They're still kind of hard and brittle. We want them to be pliable before we put the boiling water in. But it is starting to separate because this was a hard block that was really um, flinty. Now it's coming apart. So yeah, mung bean noodle, rice noodle, um, soak it for seven to 10 minutes to loosen it up. Uh, if you're gonna use it in a soup, you can just add it at the last minute and they'll uh, be tender. But if you're going to eat it in a salad like I'm going to do, uh, you soak for seven to ten and then add boiling water for like three minutes. Kind of like instant ramen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the next step is I'm going to form the meat mixture into burger-like patties. I think I'm going to do two ounce patties, so I'm going to get my kitchen scale. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna look good. Woot. You can hear the, the water boiling behind me. Speaking of which, I should drink water. And if you haven't had water in a minute, you should drink some water as well. Also, um, if folks are interested in coming to Wonderville tonight, that's where I will be after 8 p.m. I'm going to be um, taking photos of the newest hot dog, which is called Mustard Combat, because it's pickled mustard green and onion on a hot dog. And we have two kinds of hot dogs. We have Brooklyn cured um, all beef hot dog. And then we also have a yeah dog sunflower seed based hot dog. So we chose a soy free dog because we noticed that um, there's like a growing soy allergy in our community. And so uh, yeah, dog vegan is really good <laughs> and uh, really serves a purpose. Okay. Kind of get the noodles. Oh my God. Come on timer. Hey Alexa, how much time is left? Okay, two more minutes for these noodles. 12 minutes left on the meat. Huh? So much time. Okay. I'll just put this over here. I'm going to get a few more things from the fridge that I'm going to put in the broth. I just like making broth, by the way. It's just something I do because I have a lot of waste product from everything that I make. So it's always good to just have broth on hand. All right, we're also gonna stick some wilted cilantro in there. And then this, um, this is a bunch of rib meat, like pork ribs that I trimmed off of the spare ribs that I made earlier in the week. Um, I saved like the salvageable parts for like yakitori skewers and I put those in the freezer, but, um, like I marinated them and put them in the freezer, which is very exciting. So I could just cut it up and then skewer them and grill it. Um, uh, but this, this is all the tendon, the fat, the ligaments, like stuff that you really wouldn't put on a skewer. So uh, I'm going to use this to make broth, pork broth, ramen broth. Yay. Okay, I also have some uh, pieces of ginger here that were at the end 
of uh, chopping the other day. So, also gonna add, what else am I gonna add to my broth? Let's see, let's do some pepper. I have some pepper. Ooh, the water, she is boiling. Get some pepper. I think I have some powdered bay leaf somewhere. I don't know. Let me see. Oh, we got thyme. Let's do thyme. Do some dried thyme. Try to get rid of it. Too much thyme, to be honest. Ooh. Can't open it. Oh my god. I swear I'm smarter than the bottle. Rude. Uh, Russell, sing mode is where you spend your channel points and I will sing all of my conversation for the next five minutes. <laughs> Hydrate. Oh, Alexa, stop. I've just hydrated, but I'm gonna hydrate again. Rude, you just activated sing mode? Okay, hold on. We're gonna set a timer for five minutes and from now, yeah girl is gonna sing everything from now until five minutes from now. So we gonna add some time to the broth. Get rid of this trash. Get rid of the trash, yeah. I didn't tell you that singing would be good, but this is what you get for redeeming your points. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, welcome back to Attack the Pantry, the musical. Attack the Pantry, the musical. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, actually, <laughs> I'm gonna put my headphones back on so that I can hear the music beat so I don't sound asynchronous. <laughs> Ooh. Maybe we'll have a dance track. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're so right. I miss the opportunity to cover my hands with time and sing too much time on my hands. <laughs> Forgot y'all, the timer went off for the noodles, so I'm gonna drain the water off. Look at them pretty noodles. Look at them pretty noodles. Look at them pretty noodles. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. <sighs> uh, Alexa, set a timer for three minutes. Got some boiling water on my mung bean noodles today. Got some boiling water on my mung bean noodles. I should put this bowl down as hot. <laughs> Alright. I'ma get my colander from the cabinet. Perfect.
I got this colander from Daiso. It was only two dollars. <laughs> it's perfect for straining noodles. It's perfect for straining noodles. It's perfect for straining noodles. For me, for you, for dinner tonight. Hey. <laughs> Wait in three minutes for these noodles to finish. Then we're gonna make the meatball. I hope we can make the meatball soon cause I'm getting so hungry. <laughs> Thank you for redeeming the sing mode on my channel. Woo. Rarely does anyone redeem this thing. I know it's a lot of channel points for you to spend. <laughs> it's very silly and I love it. <laughs> ah. Look at how soft the noodles have gotten. Next, I'm gonna strain them. Oh! All right. Thank you, Russell, for redeeming sing mode. <laughs> We're gonna change the music back. <laughs> that was silly. Um, but thank you. Always, uh, always good to introduce chaos to this stream. Uh, Alright, so we had soaked the mung, <laughs> the mung bean noodles <coughs> in room temperature water and then we brought some water to a boil in the kettle and we added the hot water to the bowl and now the noodles are getting soft and then we will be able to use them for a salad. Ah, y'all. Yes. Alexa, stop. Okay, now it's time to drain the noodles. Um, yeah, so I was saying I got this lovely little um, noodle strainer from Daiso, and I love it because they make a lot of soba and ramen, uh, and it's just the perfect size for like a bowl. Let me do this over the sink. The cool thing is you can just nest it over a bowl. Look, they have, you have these, oh, well, don't lose them. Got our noodles, I'm not gonna let them <laughs> cool. They're still steamy. But now they're like semi-translucent. I do not really want to put hot noodles on lettuce, so we're gonna let these cool. Okay, Alexa, how much time is left? Two minutes left for, until we form the meatball patty, so we're gonna do that next. Steamy, steamy. <laughs> Bars. <laughs> Thanks, Russell. <laughs> I was trying. <laughs> I mean, it's helping me to do sing mode or like the improvisational stuff because, uh, you know, always need that for podcast stuff, so. That's why I have it there. Um, I can put this aside. Meat. I'm gonna get this out of here. I'm gonna get a, another sheet pan for our pork meatballs. Ha! And then we're gonna get my kitchen scale look at that I'm gonna get some plastic wrap because we're dealing with some meat okay so I've wrapped the top in plastic wrap so that I don't get meat all over my kitchen scale and we're gonna go with I think two ounce portion what is this there's a piece of something under my plastic wrap Okay. <clears throat> I'm 
also gonna bring the heat up on my grill pan. Uh, I have a lovely little grill pan on the stove. You see that green thing there? No, no, next to it. There it is. Uh, we will get kitchen kitchen cam back someday. <laughs> but uh, all right, we're gonna go get the meat a little preemptively because technically it's still marinating while uh, it sits in these balls, ball shapes. Okay, so tear, my friend, tear. All right, check it out. Here we've got our meat mix. This was minced onion, garlic, uh, fish sauce, sugar, soy sauce, no salt or pepper, which I think is really interesting. Like a lot of Southeast Asian food doesn't use um, a lot of salt or pepper because um, you know they rely on um, really potent sauces like fish sauce and soy sauce. So we're gonna form two ounce size meatballs and we're not going for like round meatballs. Oh, that was 2.1, oh my God. Alexa, stop. That was 2.1, wow, I was so close. Almost, my, my perfect grab. So I'm gonna roll it into balls, but we're also gonna kinda do burger burger patty, but then pull, push in the sides a little bit, so it's like uh, more cylindrical, like a puck. So we're going two ounce pucks here. Let's see. I think I got a feel for it. Let's see how much that was. 1.9! Oh my god! Tenth of a tenth of an ounce off each time. ball. Can anyone tell me how many ounces are in a pound and how many of these little patties am I going to make? So if I had a pound, how many and each patty is two ounces, how many are there going to be? This is a basic cooking question that I think everybody should know. Well, wait. If you don't know the answer, I will tell you shortly. Okay, let's see. Can I get a perfect two ounce? 2.4, too big. Oh, boo. 2.2, oh my god. grocery store does not serve, you know, does not sell exact, <laughs> exact weights. Two point six, too big, oh, too big, too big. Did you know that the Tagalog word for water is too big? T-U-B-I-G, too big. Smash. 
not all the way. We're not smashing all the way. Making them about an inch tall, maybe? Half an inch tall? of this is a little inflated because it's not just the meat weight that you're dealing with you're also doing the weight of the onion and the garlic and the liquid measure so you're gonna have a little bit more than eight probably ten it's having a very loud conversation in the hallway What is that? Two. Oh, great. So yeah, we have, well, maybe we have 10 and the 10th one is a little light, which is fine. 2.1. Oh, wow. Okay. So 10 of these little babies. on both sides in an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, yes. Which is the USDA approved temperature for doneness uh, for pork. Let's go get my little thermo pop. So, I got this cute little um, thermometer. It's an instant read and it's egg color. Um, and I have a partnership with Thermopop. So if you go to my About tab here on Twitch, you can click through and I get commissions if you choose to buy a Thermopop. Um, this is the Thermopop 2, which is the newer version. And uh, I love this thermometer because there's a, just a single button on the back and it's backlit. Check it out, that's it's just turning on. It's currently 62.5 in my kitchen. <laughs> And I like that um, it has like a pen holder like thing so I can just put it in my pocket like that, like a nerd. Um, all right, so we're gonna turn up our heat on the grill pan to medium high. And I'm gonna have my thermo pop at the ready to measure the internal temperature of our lovely pork pâtés. Mm, yummy. Um, okay, so we also, it's important when you're dealing with raw meat and frying anything in general uh, to not only have it on a separate container or pan, but to have somewhere to put it. A landing spot is what we call it. Where is it going to land? So I'm going to get my spatula. Spatula. Heat sensitive, heat, heat proof spatula. Um, this is my... Thermopop brand uh, spatula in egg color. See, so like they they match, but I'm not using this one because we're not baking today. <laughs> okay, our grill is getting to temperature. 
I'll know by the smell. <laughs> And if it gets too smoky in here, I'm gonna have to turn on the vent, which is gonna be a little harder to hear me, but uh, we'll do our best. So I'm probably only going to do, let's make six of these, and then I'm gonna save the rest for meals throughout the week. That sounds like a good idea, right? Okay, so we're gonna get a landing spot for our cooked meat, which is gonna be another pan. I'm gonna do the half pan this time. Yeah, half pan. And then uh, we're gonna get a bowl to finish the whole dish. I wanna show you what I've been making. Okay. My lovely bowl. So proud of it. You can't even see that it's chipped. <laughs> if I really like zoom in here, it's chipped right there. But if I hold it like here, you really can't see that it's chipped. <laughs> and whenever I take photos, I do a three-quarter frame so that you don't see the chipped edge. <laughs> oh, hi, Chisel59. How you doing? Um, this bowl, I have only have one fancy bowl. All my bowl, other bowls are like cheap IKEA. <laughs> this is my only like crate and barrel bowl. This is like the style bowl. So I, I, you know, if you want to take pictures of your food, then getting one bowl is totally worth it. Um, one really pretty bowl. But the rest of my bowls are like, you know, dollar store, like <laughs> really, really cheap stuff. So don't feel like, you know, you have to get the whole set, you know? It's nice. Also, you don't really need nice stuff to make food look good. So you usually get eat your food before you get, you get to take pictures. I mean, that's life. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the, the food is my business, so I have to take pictures of things. It's like always good to remember if I'm gonna write a recipe down and stuff, but otherwise, if it's not your job, you don't have to worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just enjoy your food. I think that's really important, enjoying your food. All right, I'm gonna feel the grill pan over here. I think it's pretty hot. I'm gonna wave my thermometer over the grill pan and see. We are at ambient temperature of 115. Wow, okay, is that cool? I love how fast this thing is. It's so rad. But check it out. Again, uh, ambient temperature is dropping. Uh, I love this thing because it's got this like backlight. It's glowing. Backlight. No, you can't see it because my light is right there. There you go. <laughs> All right, I think we're ready to fry. I'm gonna turn the computer, maybe. Let's see if we can do this. You can see the microphone. <laughs> you kind of see me. All right, so we got my spatula. This one is from GIR. I forget what it, uh, oh, GIR I think stands for Get It Right. And I have a set that I got from, for Christmas. Um, and so far, pretty great. Uh, I have the spatula. I have a spoonula. I didn't know there was a name for this, the spoonula, which is a spatula, like a baking spatula that has flexible ends. I actually prefer to use this when I'm um, filling piping bags or working with batter. The spoonula is actually much better than a regular flat spatula. Like you'll see that this spatula is is not so flexible on the sides. It's it gets pretty hard to get in the you know everything out of a bowl. So the spoonula is I endorse the spoonula. <laughs> anyway, let's get to frying these dang pork patties. Okay, so I'm gonna set a stopwatch so that I know how long each one's going to take. I, this is part of my job. Part of my job is finding out how long things take to cook. So we're gonna go. Oh, look at it go. You've heard of a spork before. Makes sense. Totally. Yeah. Spoonula, spork, all these portmanteaus of tools. Okay, we're gonna get another one on there. Well, no, I'm gonna wait. I'm actually gonna, I'm timing this. I really wanna time this. 
and you can see that it's smoking here. I might turn on the vent a little bit. So, sorry if you can't hear me as much. So I think a minute, we're not even at a minute yet, we're at 40 seconds. I think I'm gonna flip it after a minute and see what happens. Grill pan, we love grill pan. The only thing is that it gets smoky when you try to barbecue indoors. But I have a ceiling fan that's on. I have a back door that I can open if it gets too smoky in here. But you can see, you can see it, it's <laughs> opaque. <laughs> All right, we got a minute. I'm going to flip. Oh, cute, we got grill marks. Oh boy. All right. I'm going to keep grilling another one. Let's go for two minutes on this one. Alexa, set a timer for two minutes. Press it down a little bit. Get that nice sear. It's true. Better hearing the fan than the smoke detector. You know what I'm talking about. You've definitely set off a smoke detector or two. I. I am notorious for setting off my smoke detectors, but it hasn't happened on stream yet, so. Alright, I'm gonna test the temperature on patty number one. Quite at the safe consuming temperature yet. 758, 59, 60, 5 more degrees, 61, 62, 63, 64, and 65. Safe temperature. Great. And that took about three minutes. Look at that cute baby. And I know it's a little pink on the side still, but as this rests, the temperature is actually going to go up another 15 degrees, so it technically will be safe. <laughs> All right, so we're doing two minutes per side on the next one, and I think it might be, I'm gonna read it now. I haven't flipped it yet, but I can read the temp. Wow. Okay, we're gonna stop my phone timer. <laughs> now we can have some consistency. Ah, yes. Alexa, stop. We're at 120, 148. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> Alexa, set a timer for a minute and a half. Okay, so we'll split the difference. So, two minutes plus a minute and a half. About three and a half minutes, consistently. So that's a minute and a half per side, technically. All right, so I'm gonna let that go. <laughs> this is my life. I test things all the time. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the two minutes per side, we get more of a caramelized grill color. I'm going to show you the difference between the two when I pull this one off. So it'll be, it reaches temperature at three minutes total cook time, I think. So that's two minutes, 30 seconds. And trying to poke through the middle like horizontally but without you know hitting the bottom or the top technically <laughs> you can start to see it's hazy in here <laughs> yeah I do love this temperature uh, this thermometer because uh, 
it's like the best one I've had, honestly. Like I've gone through a lot of them and I've broken so many of them. Um, this one is great, but I use it every day. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, Alexa, stop. up with you there we go vigorously keep measuring now. I'm gonna just scrape my pan a little bit because it's getting smoky. And cook the rest really quickly. Okay. So we're gonna do four more. So one. Set a timer for two minutes. All right, and the rest of these I'm going to save for later. <laughs> You'd show all your friends if you had one, yeah. It's true, it's true. You gotta use the thermometer if you want perfection. And um, this is something that we discuss on my podcast a lot, um, that a lot of cooking is about safety. Cooking for other people is about safety. and. Uh, we have standards and rules for this and um, it just you know you want to make sure you don't food poison yourself because it sucks <laughs> it just sucks cute little patties I love them oh it's smoky in here <laughs> I'm going to turn the heat up high and I'm going to open the back door Oh my, <laughs> it's really funky. Welcome to Attack the Pantry Smokehouse. <laughs> All right, almost done. Then we get to assemble. Oh my God, very excited to assemble. We're gonna also turn off the grill pan and move it off the burner when these are flipped. Go, 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 yeah. Alexa, stop. Alexa, stop. Alexa, stop. Oh my god, you can't hear me. Alexa, stop. See, she can't hear me. Alright, 
almost done. You'd have all the beef patties. I mean, I love beef patties. Love burgers. Love Jamaican beef patties. All right, we're gonna move this out of here. I'm going to preemptively turn off the stove because it's going to retain a lot of heat on this cast iron thing. And I'm going to move it to the back burner so that it stops smoking, basically. <laughs> All right. We're accomplishing dinner. We're doing it. You're waiting in anticipation. I know I'm gonna like, I'm gonna plate it up for you. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be fun. In my nice bowl. 70% grilling, 30% thermo thermometer. I mean, you get a feel for it about time, like, you know, with time and temperature after you do the precise measurement at first. But, you know, I've been doing this for years. It's not like, <laughs> that's why I'm confident in, in, the, in the methods. All right. Yeah, I can also feel it. It's, it's like, it's not hard. It's still tender, but it's not raw. one mess up. Oh well. Cute. Oh, I dropped it on my computer. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen someday. <laughs> I dropped so much food on my computer. <laughs> my poor computer. Anyway. Yeah, the computer has a taste. For sure. The computer eats first. The computer eats first. Alright. one this one has more caramelization can add more time and these four are from the last batch and you can see that the longer cook time really uh, benefits uh, the caramelization they stick less also I mean I did break one of them but um, yeah so about three minutes three to four minutes total cook time so one and a half minutes per side or two minutes per side is kind of the perfect medium for this but um let's plate it up oh my god i'm so excited to plate this wow okay let me just read what it's supposed to be the order of operations so lettuce herbs noodle cucumber and then meat cute very very cute It's the moment we've been waiting for. I know, it's true. I'm glad you're here for this. All right, here's our beautiful bowl. So we're gonna start. We got some lettuce. Let's start with some lettuce. And we're gonna go with Half of the mung bean noodle. Look at that. Do some spaghetti swirls in here like that. 
beauty. Oh my god. And then Yeah, this is what we've been looking forward to for sure. It is very vibrant. Thank you. Alright, then we're gonna go with some cucumber sliced on the diagonal. Get that here. In food styling, we think um, you know, height and odd numbers. Height and odd numbers. So like that's how we can get some asymmetry in there. So cute, cucumber color. It's gorgeous. I know. It's so gorgeous. I'm going to do big helping of the cilantro stem and then the actual cilantro herb here. View. One brown one. Yeah. And then we have our sharply cut. Uh, we're actually going to do this last because we want to save some green here. We're gonna do like three of these cuties, right? Cute, oh my God. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh, you got an ad? Okay, I'll wait, I'll wait for you. Oh no, it's okay. <laughs> okay. Then we're gonna finish with our scallions that were cut on a sharp bias, so on the diagonal. Oh, this is so pretty. Dinner is gonna be so pretty. Wow. Wow. So pretty. <laughs> it's all good. And then, so not only that, but we also have a spicy fish sauce mixture that I had already made. And then we're gonna spoon it onto the meatballs. And I don't have to get my phone also because I gotta check it out. We'll give this a good stir. And oh my gosh! Beautiful, uncha! Wow! Turn off my fan. Oh, okay. You can hear me, man, right? What is it? Okay, so this is a Vietnamese dish called uncha. And it is uh, salad greens underneath with some mung bean noodle here. We have sliced cucumber, um, cilantro, scallion, and then these kind of fish sauce pork meatballs that are like on the little, like on the flat side. And yeah, that's our, that's our dinner today. <laughs> I was too impatient. I didn't take a picture. I'm just going to rotate the meat. I'm going to add a little bit more herbs here. <laughs> I'm so silly. Oh, I'm ready for a picture. <laughs> I was so impatient. I was already, I'm so impatient. That was funny. Alright, I'm gonna add some more herbs here. That's it. Still pretty, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Boom. Do a quick video sweep of it. Beautiful. Today, we 
Ben pun siya. Yay. You're right. In the end, I win because I have the food. <laughs> You're so right. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> Alright, folks. With that, that's the show today. I want to tell you um, what's happening next week. So, usually this is a talk show where I have guests and we talk about food. And then every now and then I'll cook something like this, you know. Um, but next week on uh, February 8th, we have my friend Joseph Strom who's going to come in and talk about music and food, which is very fun. And our podcast um, that Joseph runs, it's called Lore Club, and it's available on all their podcast platforms. Um, the week after that, February 15th, my friend Abby Balingit is going to be here talking about her new cookbook, Mayumu, which is a Filipino um, dessert book. It is awesome. It looks so good. I can't wait for her to be here and talk about it. Uh, on Wednesday, uh, February 22nd, we have my friend Teresa Finney, who's going to come on the stream and talk about her micro bakery and like, what is a micro bakery? <laughs> Um, her micro bakery is called At Heart Panaderia, and she operates out of Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> She's going to come and talk about uh, baking and sort of the perils of Patreon, which is a platform that both of us use. And so we're going to share some tips if you are curious about, you know, making your own and uh, kind of the best ways to approach it if you do food stuff. Um, and then finally, uh, my friend Didi. Didi Paterno Magpali uh, is going to join me and talk about food in Texas because that's where she lives. She lives over in um, Frisco, Texas. And I met her over the holidays while I was in, um, where was I? Louisville. I was in Louisville. <laughs> um, and she had so much to share about barbecue and really good local food. And so she's going to come and talk on the stream about everything she knows about Texas food. So it's going to be really fun. Um, but thanks everybody for hanging out and Russell specifically for activating sing mode. <laughs> we'll do that again next stream. Uh, and Chisel, very nice to meet you. Uh, welcome to a Cactus Pantry family. Um, <laughs> and I look forward to seeing you all next time uh, on Wednesday here at 5 p.m. Eastern on a Cactus Pantry. So stay tuned next. We're going to try to raid somebody. Uh, so hang out for that and uh, if I don't see you until next Wednesday have a good weekend bye everybody <laughs>